<laughs> Good morning, class. This is Computer Science Foundations, and um, this is actually first recording, March 25th, and we'll start with prayers and other things like that in the future. But right now, I'm just going to say thank you, God, for this day. you got to start somewhere, and um, the lesson for here is simply how to go ahead and install the Python editor we're going to use for this class. So tool we're using um, is the Mu Editor, and you can find that at codewith.mu. And if you go there, um, it's pretty straightforward and it's available on a lot of different platforms. Uh, first of all, there's a quick shout out to, um, oh, wait, you're looking at those tools that are in here. Let me close that. There we go. Nicholas uh, Tolervay. And he's the really guy behind this editor. So let's go look at the download page. And it's there for Windows. It's there for Mac. Uh, we have been using it on the Raspberry Pi. And for you Linux users, it's on Python package. If you don't have, um, or you want to just use the regular command line, you could do that as well. Um, this tool actually just kind of wraps it up and makes it really friendly if you're not familiar with the command line. Uh, it's also friendly if you do know the command line. So for the Mac, I just go ahead and install it. Uh, it downloads, just takes a few seconds. And in here, it's relatively small as far as IDEs go. Um, mine even here, I'm loading it down just a few more seconds. Now your platform will vary a little bit, but here it's downloaded it. You can actually see if I show for me in Finder. <clears throat> you can see I test loaded this early this morning, just with the early one, but I'm going to go and walk through that same step. So when you run it, the installer, there is agreement. Uh, by the way, this is all open source. You can actually go and look at the source for most of this tool here, but that's another project for another day. Um, one bit of note when you install on the different applications here, you'll see on the Mac in just a moment. It's going, since it's downloaded it, you're going to have to explicitly open it the first time and say, yes, I trust this program. Um, it's great to see the, the different platforms getting more serious. So here we go. If I was to drag it into here, I'm going to make a copy of it and put it into the applications folder. I'm updating it. It's going to be, it's be nice. It's fast today because um, I actually just installed it just a few minutes ago just to check. So we'll say replace just to so see what it looks like. It's okay to install it over it if you had any questions about what was going on. I can hear my dog in the background. Hey, Reese, you want to come in the camera? Uh, she says no right now, but I'm sure she'll make a, uh, a view before too long. Let's see here. All right, about halfway through. So the Mu editor um, contains the Python system inside of it. So it will run independent of what you're doing in a, if you have on a platform or you have it installed. One thing that's nice about that, it, it has the latest version that we're working with it, which is I think Python 3.8. Um, Python 3, well, actually even more recent than 3.8, has a lot of significant changes. Well, maybe it's not a lot of changes, but a, a set of core, very specific changes that are different than older versions. Uh, you might run into Python 2.7, which was the mainstay for many years. Um, if you use that, a lot of the examples will work pretty much the same, but a few core things won't. So uh, I can't really go into the depth on that here, but I need to say the whole whole focus on this class will be based upon Python 3.7 or 3.8. All right, that copy is finished. Um, wanted to show that. Now we're going to close this. If I did, just to show you what might happen here, if I did the uh, Mu editor here, if I type this in on there, let's see if it's going to run it. May have said, okay, oh, it's verifying. Let's see. Okay, I wanted you to see this is one of the messages you might get up. It says code with can't be open because Apple cannot check it for malicious software. Um, this is one of the checks that's done if you make, if you're an Apple developer and you get a certification from Apple, you can sign your code and it, you submit it. It goes on the App Store. Um, that's a great way for apps that you're buying for all sorts of different games. A lot of developers are still developing tools in the old path. Um, and sort of the standard approach that used to be for years. And for those, they're not, they don't necessarily have the Apple certifications. Um, there's no problems with that. I've done a lot of code. The code you write will be the same. 
Core point here is we're going to show in Finder. Here's the applications. This is the editor. What you need to do is, uh, and I'll only do this if for programs, you know where you got and you trust it. And code with .mu is one I trust with. If you explicitly do that, right click and hit open in on here. This is where it's going to give you that same message. But here you actually have the choice to go ahead and say, I want to, I trust it. I want to open it. Apple just basically said that if you download something by default and you double click it, it's not going to run it. It says like, you better at least say you trust this. All right. If you open the project and you have, uh, even if you've installed it again, you're going to see the project you had most recently open. So uh, I had one. If you didn't, you're probably going to find a blank or maybe a new untitled document. Just a quick review for these buttons. Um, I'll get in our class at Summit Christian. We've already gone through this, but I want to see that for anyone who's new online. One key part, and let's see, can I drag that window over here? Yes, I can. Okay, here's one funny U user interface bit. I'm going to shrink it. Let's go ahead and close out some of the other stuff just to clear the desktop a bit. What I want you to see is there's two core things to be aware of is this mode up at the top. The mode says where your Python code is going to run. Um, the fault here is that it's going to run on, on your computer. We can say sort of on the desktop or on the laptop. And here's the Python 3 that we're running. Now, there's other targets that the Python code you could you, your writing could go to. Um, for example, the BBC micro bit. This is one of the pieces on here. There, I got a, that left to right is a little, I'm getting used to that. Uh, this is the micro bit. It's a little board right here. I actually have it plugged into um, a trash bots robot, one of the ones I made. This is the micro bit itself. So you can write Python code that's gonna run on this device directly. Um, but so if you find it set to that, or you find it set to one of the other things, your code's not going to work. So the key thing is if you ever find yourself, you come back from doing um, a project and you're running it says, well, why am I getting these errors? Check the mode, make sure you set to Python three. Okay. And here's the user interface. Interesting piece. Here's the button that sets the mode. And down here is where it is. You can't quite. So let's pretend we're going to go to micro bit. All right. Notice the mode up here doesn't actually say what it is. I think that'd be kind of nice if they did that. But down here is where it says micro bit. So you might be in a scene where you got a big screen. This is off the corner, maybe off of this, you know, it could even be off of the desktop like there. Okay. Make sure you're set to the right one. So let's go to Python back to three here. And with that, you're ready to go. Let's go ahead and just say print. Hello. Hello world. All right. And when you run the code, your program is going to run right there. You do have to save this file since it's untitled. Mu by default will go ahead and put uh, make a folder called mu code that's in your user's directory. And all of your samples will by default go there. As you start making more projects, you'll want to pick a new location probably, but that's a great place to start. So we'll say uh, hello world, HW. Now the file will actually be saved as hw.py. Uh, we've run the code right here. So you've written your program, you've been able to run it. Um, at some points you'll actually use what's called the, uh, the interactive shell, the REPL, which stands for uh, read, evaluate, print, and loop. Yeah, we can see that right here. So I could say the same thing here. Hello. And when I run this, I'm actually just running it command by command. It's even more interactive. We'll turn that off. We're going to stop this here. And um, so your Python is installed and ready to run. We'll do one more tag on bit for our class um, where you can get different source. There's a lot of sample uh, Python programs, especially for the turtle graphics. I'm going to show one that we've been working with in class here. And so I'm going to turn around and go to github.com and slash Paul Austin where I've been putting the ones for our class. And we have it underneath it. SB7, which stands for Sailboat 7. And I'll move the screen back over here. Find that spot for that. Uh, inside the Python folder, we got fractals. This is a fun one to start with. 
It's a simple piece of code. Uh, future one, we'll actually look at what it means to actually um, pull GitHub or pull files from GitHub. Right now, we're going to do a quick, simple one in here. I can select the code. I could select it here and copy it. When you do that, so now I can copy it here. I can copy the code. The program's pretty simple. It's easy to accidentally get part of the web page at the same time, though, when you do that. So if you want to avoid doing that, this is a GitHub trip here. Switch it to uh, raw mode and translate it. Hmm, I wonder what it's going to translate it to. Could I translate it to, uh, let's see. Hmm, I don't know. I could translate it to Pascal or Fortran or something else. I don't think that's what they meant here. That's kind of funny. They think it's a different language. All right, but we're not going to do that. We're going to leave it. And then here I can select all the text. It will be exactly as I want it. And if I go now to the Mew editor, I could paste this code here. Oh, look, I got in something I didn't want to see. Where did that man come from? All right, 24 lines. And if we run with this, again, you have to save it. So we'll call this Snowflake. I'll just call it Snow. And here's the Koch curve, one of the fractals we worked at with before spring break. And it's trying it, you're running it. So there, we've installed Mew, we've launched it, we wrote our first Hello World program, and we got a sample piece of code from GitHub. There's a lot of samples out there, and we've run it. All right, that kind of concludes the excellence for this option. Thanks, and God bless you, and have a great day.